one more day. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. Fasting for an adjusted life. And I tell you, I'm adjusted. My life is adjusted. My vision is adjusted. My sight is adjusted. And I just am excited. And I'm having a joy in this journey. And you know, I'm, 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 I'm so grateful that we are come to this place. And you know, during this time of fasting and praying, it really wasn't like a struggle. It really wasn't like suffering. It really was like an expected change. And I believe that I have not been disappointed. I hope you haven't. One of the things that you can declare now, even as a body of Christ, and not just one individual, we can actually begin to say like Jesus said, because as he is, so are we in this world. And that should be the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And we begin to realize that God is the one that's anointed us to do what we do. God is the one that brought us from. God is the one that brought us through. And God is the one that's going to take us in. And then after the fullness, then God is going to launch us into becoming a united nation, the one that he desired in the beginning. We want to start reading in Isaiah 61 this morning, and we're going to do uh, what I used to say in the college. I'm going to do a McAllister sprint. That means I'm going to be going so fast that 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 fasten your seatbelt. But I'm going to sort of slow it down so you'll understand. But what what I want to do is do an overview going from Isaiah 61 all the way to Isaiah 65. And what I'm trying to show you is from the schoolmaster how Jesus really fulfilled all of that and then he put it in us in seed form and we can expect the Holy Spirit to bring it to our expression, our experience, and ultimately our life. Because remember, he did come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And I'm looking for a more abundant life. I'm looking for a brighter day. Why? I'm looking for the Lord. So I asked in the beginning, what do you see in 2023? I see the Lord high and lifted up. I see the Lord when I see you. I see the Lord when I see the body of Christ. I began to understand that there's nothing greater than God and what God is doing. As I progress in this, let me read a little scripture because I'm going to read and be jumping uh, different places. I want to start with verse one. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good, the good tithing unto the meek. And he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captive, and open the prison doors to them that are bound. Now, we do have to understand that Jesus actually fulfilled that scripture. But remember that what we said when we started, we were doing a seven days of external, which is closing that which he has uh, finished. We went to the second seven, which is an internal where the spirit of God is finished in, in us. And we go into the last seven, which we are in now. Now we are connected to God and coming into the understanding of how we are one with him. And as we begin to realize that when we come to an end, we launch into what we call the dimension beyond humanity the dimension that's called the kingdom of God, that which creation has been waiting for. Why? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of his vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, to anoint unto them that are mourning in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. So now we are actually entering into the fire of God, which is God himself. 
And, it, and when you talk about the fire, I'm talking about the passion of God. So it brings it all of gladness to those that are mourned and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So if you're feeling heavy, just turn in, experience the spirit of God for heaviness. For what? That they might be called trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So now what is happening is that God literally has done everything for himself, to himself, for himself. So the truth of the matter is, everything you've been going through is God was doing it for himself to get himself glory, and you become the expression of the glory of God. 61 and 10, it reads... I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful. Now that's talking about the internal view. That's talking about your soul is beginning to recognize her new lover. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation, spirit, soul, and body. He's literally brought me into a place, into the throne room, and he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. And he has made me righteous because it's a gift of God. As a bridegroom decanates herself with ornaments. And as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. God has glorified us and brought us into a place that now he's saying, I want to show you all to the world. I want to bring fruit. That they can see. I want them to understand that the fruit that I give is the fruit of the spirit where there is no law. And I'll bring you to a peaceful resolve that you'll no longer know it's you. You'll know it's me that I'm working through you so they can see me. For as the earth bring forth her bud. And as the garden causes the thing that are sown in it to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. So this thing is now leaving the spot, coming out of the people, being glorified of God and showing the world that God is alive and he's on planet Earth. Isaiah 62 and verse 6, it talks about something that's absolutely glorious. He says, I have set watchmen upon the wall. In other words, I have set some that really are mature so they can actually see the church as it is. An ecclesia, not an organization. And I say, oh, Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord. So those that are sitting on the wall is saying, let's praise God. Keep not silent. Make a sound. Make a noise. He is righteous. He is holy. He's altogether lovely. And he's making us to be the same. I'm telling you, when we begin to realize that and give him no rest till he is established mm -mm -mm. until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So the thing that we are expecting is not one day over there. We are expecting to see it in the here and now. And God going to get himself glory because he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Put his light in us and declared that we are the light and the salt of the earth. Why? He's in us. 62 and verse 12, it says, and they shall call them. They're going to give them a new name. Say they are the holy people. They are the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, watch this, sought 
out. In other words, people are going to begin to seek you out. They're going to begin to want the wisdom of God. They're going to be want the glory of God. But most of all, they just going to want him. And it says, a city not forsaken. So this is not a city you're going to. This is a city that you become one with it. Because we begin to understand that we're coming into a place of the unity of one with many houses, with many temples joined together by the Spirit of God, causing God to understand, I found myself a place of pleasure. And, and they look and they say, oh my God, who is this that cometh up from Eden? In other words, coming forth with dyed garment from Bashan. This that is glorious in his apparel, in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness might mighty to save. In other words, he's coming up and there's nothing impossible for him to do through you. Let me say it again. There's nothing impossible for him to do through you. Because now he's bringing you into the understanding of what you were born to be. You were born to be an answer for the nations of the world. So God is changing you, not for you, but for himself. Because you asked him to come. The nations asked him to come. The church prayed for him to come. Natural Israel prayed for him to come. The Jews didn't know him, but my God, he says, I'm going to bring them too because they didn't even sought me, but I had a love for them. Isaiah 64 and 1, it says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, oh God, rend the heaven that thou wouldest come down. He did. He came down. He rend the heavens that he would come down, that the mountains would flow down at thy presence. So in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Whenever he comes down, everything is shaken. Why? It's because time is invaded by eternity. And when time invades eternity, it causes it to become like it is. So what it says in verse 2, it says, As when the melting fire burneth, and the fire causeth the water to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at my presence. In other words, what you have to understand is that you become the fire of God. Darkness is dispelled when you show up. And all of a sudden, you begin to realize that God is doing something in you. And watch this. He is doing it for himself so that they can be glorified. This is the place of the new beginning. This is the place of totally delivered. This is a place that God delivered your soul. Now, from the schoolmaster, Jesus did it. But by the Holy Spirit, he's doing it again. And he's doing it in a people. And he literally was doing it for naturalism. But well, watch the shift of the thing. And everything has happened is really happened because of God. Isaiah 65 says this. And verse 1. He says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. Mm -mm -mm. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. In other words, he said, now I'm in drafting the Gentiles, everybody plus the Jews. Now I'm bringing you into a place because what I want to see I want to see a minute-membered man. I want to see a man in my image. I want to see a man in my nature. I want to see and show off to the nations of the world who I am. 
because I am showing up in the spot, you. And as this 6 to 5 and 8 says, thus saith the Lord, as this new wine is found in the cluster. So the new wine is found in the body of Christ. And one saith it, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants' sake that I may not destroy them all. In other words, God says, I so love you so much. I'm going to bring you into myself, into my presence, so I don't have to destroy you which belong to me. And I will, verse 9, I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah an inheritance of my mountains, my God, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell therein. That's a people of God. And what we're saying is we're coming into a place now that we can begin to celebrate. I mean, really celebrate. Why? It's because we begin to see that this is the season, this is the time, this is the day that I can walk in this new way. This has been given to me freely. This is the new world in order. So God has brought us into a place that justice is being served and it's being served by the hand of God. Now is the time to stand up. And that is allow God to stand up in you. Allow God to shine through you. He says, we all are the work of his hand. So I'm the workmanship of God. He's working on me. And he is working through me. I'm just enjoying the ride. But I have to understand that he's bringing us into a place that he will release us to the nations of the world because as we come into the unity of one, we'll come to realize we've already been accepted in the beloved. We are already righteous in God. And we come to the realization that our worth is in him and we are worth what he's worth. Remember, as we bring it into a close, it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. God passed that on to us. The restoration of Zion. He's drawing it all to himself. And vengeance and redemption. Because he's delivering you from all the old. He's bringing you into a place. That you become a praise of God in the earth. And that you will praise and magnify him. And be the expression of Judah. And when he came down. They didn't expect for him to be such a lover. When he came down, they didn't expect for him to actually take upon himself all of your punishment to give unto you righteousness. And he says, now I want a body that I can manifest myself in. I have found a head. Now I am bringing forth the body. And the body of Christ is this new place. It is the new communion. I have showed up again. And this is the joy of the new age. And it's the age of the kingdom of God. So if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, you will be thrust into the right place because. He is bringing the body into a place that he's going to cause them to be seen of who he is. Just be in 2023 because you're going to come to realize that God has caused something new. And we'll talk about that tomorrow as we bring it to a close, but with the joy of the Lord. With the expectancy fulfilled, with the vision of the future, and declaring a new born again 
nation. Father, we love you and we praise you. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name.